So my name is Yanya and I am the niece of Celine and I'm really excited for you guys to be embarking on this journey in a few days, very soon. What? One day? Two days? Um, and Celine asked me to share a little bit about my experience in India traveling, especially as a woman, a white woman. Um, there's a few things that I've learned that I found really important and I pass them on to a lot of other travelers who have also found them important and helpful. So uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm going to ramble a little because I haven't had time to write this down and organize my thoughts. Um, I've been to India four times and I've collectively spent probably about eight months there. I've traveled through various regions of the country um, and my husband also happens to be Indian, although he's super American and I actually took him to India for his first time in India. Um, but his family's traditional, so I've continued to learn more from them about the culture over the years. So, first off, um, my main purpose in talking to you guys is to talk to the girls, the ladies, um, that as a woman and as a white Western woman, it's important to recognize that you are representing your people, the Dutch people, Dutch women, um, to Indians and especially to Indian men. India is a complex culture that's going through a lot of modernization, a lot of westernization. They're trying to figure out a lot right now, but certainly um, there's many areas within women's rights where they're behind, but that's kind of irrelevant to the fact that they have their own culture and they have their own dress, their own attire, their own fashion, um, and that's just a part of their culture that we need to respect when we're stepping into their country. They're not coming into our country, we're stepping into their home. So I think it's important to recognize both that you're not going to receive the same treatment that you receive in the Netherlands and you shouldn't expect to um, as an equal member of society, but also that you're stepping into their culture as a woman and as a person and you need to respect their views and their practices. Also, you're gonna be interfacing with different organizations and you're gonna be representing your organization. So you really wanna show that you're putting your best foot forward and that you're respecting their customs and what makes them comfortable, what makes them uncomfortable. And so as a representative of the Netherlands and your organization working with organizations that are helping people that are most at need, it's most appropriate that you address appropriately and that you respect those cultures. And even when you're not in those, working with those organizations and you're just walking around a town or city, again, you're gonna be wearing your shirts, right, that say your organization name. So it's important to be respectful. Um, additionally, it's important to recognize that Indian men and Indians in general will view Indian women and Western white women very differently because they do also understand that there's cultural differences but they may not understand those cultural differences correctly if they've never left India before just as we often don't understand cultural differences of cultures that we witness from afar but even more so they see our movies they see our TV shows they see Hollywood movies and what do they see in those Hollywood movies? They see scantily dressed white women making out with, having sex with, being fully nude in those movies. But in Bollywood movies and in India media, that would never be done. They still don't have male and female characters kiss on screen. In the last five to 10 years, there's a lot more physical affection that happened between female and male actors on screen, but this did not happen um, until recently, and they don't kiss, and they certainly don't have um, nudity or sex scenes or anything like that. So what they think of Western women is definitely an objectification of women, and when we go to India and we play into those stereotypes by wearing shorts or wearing tank tops or acting in certain flirtatious ways 
in public, we are playing into those objectifications and we are validating those views. So the best thing you can do is to not validate those views and dress in a way that they understand that women dress. Um, there was something else I wanted to add about that. Let me see if I remember it. Um, so how do women dress in India? This is where I think Western women often get really confused. When we look at a typical Muslim society in the Middle East where the women are fully covered, including their head, um, and maybe they're wearing a lot of neutral or dark colors, then we think, ah, yes, the women dress modestly, I will dress modestly. But when you walk into a city in India and you walk out of your hotel, um, the women are dressed so colorfully, they're beautiful, they have jewelry on, and a lot of them are wearing saris. And as I'm sure most of you know, a sari is a long piece of fabric that wraps around their body, and it has a blouse that they call it, the top is a blouse that cuts off here. So this means that this part of their body is open and nude. Now if we were to wear a midriff shirt and show this part of our body, we consider that to be very, very sexy, right? That's not how you would dress to go to school, that's not how you would dress to go to the grocery store. But you will notice that their blouses are always covering their shoulders and their neckline probably won't even be this low, it would probably be about this high. Their back may be exposed, their midriff may be exposed, but their skirt is covering all the way down to their ankles and their shoulders are covered. This is their form of modesty, it is not the same as our understanding of modesty. So. That's why I think we get confused. I've seen a lot of tourists go to India and they see how colorful the women are, that their midriffs are showing, and then they think it's appropriate for them to walk around in little spaghetti strap tank tops when it's really not. So similar to if you were to visit the Vatican, you wouldn't walk into those churches wearing a little tank top and short shorts, you would cover up appropriately because that's the cultural practice there. That's the cultural practice in India. It's to have pants down to your ankles or a skirt down to your ankles and to have your shoulders covered. Now, I think you guys will be wearing those shirts that you have the whole time, right? So that's not so much of an issue. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about their fashion. Another thing that you'll see a lot of the women wearing is what's called a kurta. K-U-R-T-A, and that's a long shirt or gown that comes past their knees usually, and then it's paired with pants underneath. Part of that practice is that you're actually covering this part of your body with fabric. So when we wear just pants and a t-shirt, right, <laughs> we see the split in our pants, <laughs> but they don't see that because they wear a shirt that covers past that and past their bum. And that's kind of part of covering up a part of the body that may be considered kind of evocative or provocative. And they're also often wearing a long scarf, which is called a dupata, and that that's gonna cover their shape, right? Their bust or their chest and their neck and also their shoulders, depending on how they wear it. So again, keeping in mind that when they're wearing the sari, they have fabric draped around them, their shoulders are covered by their blouse, and the skirt of the sari fully covers from waist to ankles. And when they're wearing a gurta, they're wearing a long shirt that's covering their hips. And again, they have a scarf to cover the shape of their upper body if they feel the need to. So when I travel in India, I try to wear mostly t-shirts and mostly pants. Um, all four times I've been in India, it's been as hot or hotter as it's been when you've you are going um, I still wear long pants and honestly I don't think it makes you hotter once it's that hot long pants and shorts don't really make a difference I prefer the long pants because I know I'm covered from the dust and from the Sun um, I will also say that I have traveled to India as I said several times I have never had a really bad experience with the men there I've never been groped in a public place but nearly every white woman that I've talked to that's traveled by herself in India has been groped when she's been in a train station or in a crowded market. And this is just, 
it's not a violent experience, but it's a very unpleasant and violating experience that you want to avoid. And if it's happening, it's a pretty good indication that you have, like I said, played into their objectification of women by wearing something inappropriate, because when I've talked to these women, that's often been the case. So that's the other thing I think I wanted to say is um, that we're doing this to be respectful, but we're also doing it to protect ourselves. There, like I said, um, when I started, there are issues with women's rights in India. Absolutely, people are working on them. It's not our place to work on them. We can go and we can help the organizations that are working on them, but by showing up in shorts and a tank top, we're not helping them progress. Um, we're probably setting them back, and that's for the women there on the ground to be doing, and we can support them in that effort. Um, but again, we're, you're only there for two weeks and your job is to be respectful and observe uh, the culture. So when I travel, like I said, I wear pants, I wear a t-shirt, and then I always travel with a lightweight scarf. And this has come in handy in so many ways. Um, it's a great protector from the sun, from the dust, from the pollution. I like to travel with an infinity scarf, but you can definitely travel just with one long lightweight scarf. The way the women wear their scarves, their scarves are not infinity scarves, but this works just fine, um, is like this, like just draped over their shoulders, like so. Maybe they'll let the outer edges fall down. Sometimes for fashion, just because the scarf has been such, the dupath has become such a part of their fashion for these outfits, they may just throw it on and it may not be covering and it may just hang. They may pin it in fancy ways to themselves. But day to day you will see that most of the women walking around are using their scarves in many different practical ways in that moment. So I can cover up like this if I'm feeling the need to be particularly modest. I can cover my whole front. If I'm wearing a lower cut shirt, I can make sure to cover the front this way. If I'm wearing a t-shirt or even a tank top when I shouldn't be, like I've stepped out of my hotel and I didn't mean to, then this is great because they don't know that and my shoulders are covered. If I'm gonna step into a place where I want to feel more protected from the stares of the men, I will reach into this inner edge and I will cover my head like so. And that gives a message to everybody that I am seeking to be modest, that I don't wanna be stared at. Um, if Ladies, <laughs> the men will stare. Um, it can be really intense and uncomfortable. And it's not really polite even by their standards, but again, you're being objectified and they're trying to wrap their mind around what they're seeing. And um, yeah, I could go into that, but I won't. Um, if you want them to stop, I've tried many different techniques. I've heard of women going up to them and yelling in their face. I've heard of women walking up to them and dumping their water bottle in their face. This is disrespectful. It's not diplomatic. Um, it's very much out of your place since again, you are in their space and in their country and in their culture. Um, I have tried staring back. I've tried waving and asking them to stop. Um, this does not work. <laughs> but what has worked is this. Simply covering my face and looking away, that plays into their understanding of asking them to stop in their modesty. So if you're feeling uncomfortable, this is my best suggestion. My other suggestion would be to ask a male um, student that is with you to walk up to them and ask them to stop and they will feel very embarrassed and uncomfortable. And I'm sorry that as a woman that you're not able to make that request yourself, but um, this is the way it is still in parts of society. Okay, this video is getting long. Um, another thing that's really great is if it's getting really um, smoky or dusty, you can use your scarf. So, um, and of course you can pick out a scarf to take on your trip that individualizes your style and your culture. And I apologize for the fireworks, it is 4th of July here. <laughs> Don't drink any water unless it's from a unopened bottled water, bottle of water. Listen to Celine, do what she tells you to do, eat healthy, um, and have a great time. You know you're gonna be really uncomfortable at times, and that's, that's important. That's part of the experience. So just uh, observe, learn, and have fun, you guys. I can't wait to hear all about it.